He was a man with a deep love for his country and a profound belief in a better future for Russia. I'm an optimist. I hope that this 20 years of Putin is not set in stone. We weren't doomed to it. We weren't meant to go in that direction. The interview acquired by Sky News and never seen before is one of the last Alexei Navalny would give in full health. A few months later, he was poisoned before his three years in jail and then death in an Arctic labour camp. The interview shows Navalny for what he was, a young, charismatic politician offering an alternative to the theft and corruption of Putin. The entire Putin elite is absolutely corrupt and it is absolutely colonially minded. They have moved all their families, their children, their assets to the West. And they treat our country as a free hunting zone. And that's exactly how it works. Navalny and his organization fought with extraordinary courage against that alleged corruption with video exposés claiming to show the lavish lifestyles of Putin and his elite. Work, he says, the state did what it could to destroy. They try to prevent us from shooting our videos because the main and most important way to spread information in Russia right now is YouTube. It will probably be difficult to find a single person in our office who has not been arrested for a period of 10, 15 or 30 days. And many have criminal cases against them that are either suspended or ongoing. And in a poignant moment in the interview, Alexei Navalny makes it clear he knew the risks he was running. Those who try to resist, let's say, they face the consequences quite quickly. But some of Navalny's strongest words are against the West, and Britain in particular, for letting Putin and his cronies allegedly get away with it. The West does nothing at all, I would say. There are some ritual dances, but nothing really happens. Why do corrupt officials still live in London? Because these corrupt officials feed a huge number of wonderful London lawyers. These people, they will appear very civilized. We will be pleased to chat with them if they sit next to us. They will be wearing a tie and fine manners, and at the same time, they are serving the interests of utter, complete bandits. It is a damning indictment about the way London and the UK has enabled Putin and his cronies to stash their dirty money abroad. Britain has imposed more sanctions on Russia since, but anti-corruption investigators say still not enough is being done to stop what Navalny campaigned against. This isn't just about hiding money and suspicious wealth and getting it out of countries where the predicate offence of corruption has occurred in the first place. It's allowing people who are opposed to the rules-based international order to buy access, reputation and influence in democratic societies on an industrial scale. And there's controversy over the limited action announced by the UK in the wake of Navalny's death that has targeted only the officials in charge of his jail. Russians in exile, like journalist Yulia Maneva, who knew Navalny, say he would have regarded the UK's latest sanctions as laughable. He liked humour, so <laughs> I feel like he would laugh at this point uh, because of what we've seen in recent days. If this is everything that we're going to see uh, from the UK to in the response of Navalny's death, it looks quite weak and um, a bit pathetic. Despite all Putin's Russia did to him, Alexei Navalny remained positive to the end, smiling in his last court appearance the day before his death. For him, the Putin years have been an aberration. Russia's destiny, he believed, is a freer future. His death, though, cast that even deeper into doubt. His final thoughts in this interview, now all the more haunting. Russia is a European country. All the people who live here want to live like Europe. So I hope that 10 years from now, if you interview me again, I'll be able to tell you how we managed to overcome the corrupt money laundering. Dominic Waghorn, Sky News.